Hello everyone, in today's video we will study about isomerism. So there are various types of isomerism to be studied but in today's video we will be concerned with isomerism with respect to carbohydrates. So before studying isomerism we shall introduce ourselves with some basic terms which are important to know. The first one is isomers. Isomers are the compounds that have same molecular formula but different structural formula. For example, we have the hexose compound that is aldohexose and ketohexose. Common name for these compounds is glucose and fructose. The molecular formula for both the compounds is same that is C6H2LO6 but the structural formula varies that is glucose has the aldehyde group present at the first carbon whereas fructose has ketose functional group at second carbon. Next, we will look at the term isomerism. The phenomena of exhibition of isomers is known as isomerism. Like we seen in the previous example, we have the hexose sugar in which we have the aldehyde form of it and the ketone form of the same compound. So we can say that the hexose molecules has two isomers that is one in aldehyde form and the other in the ketonic form. Next, we will take a look at the term reference carbon atom. The term reference carbon atom refers to the carbon which is present prior to the terminal carbon. For example, here we have the molecule of glyceraldehyde which is also known as glycerose. If we number the carbon chain in glyceraldehyde, we shall start from the functional group that is from the aldehyde group. So number 1, number 2 and number 3. The penultimate carbon here is the second carbon atom. So we can say that reference carbon atom is same as penultimate carbon atom. Now let us take a look at the terms asymmetric carbon and symmetric carbon. Asymmetric carbon is commonly also known as chiral carbon. Chiral carbon or asymmetric carbon refers to the carbon atom which has all its four valencies fulfilled by different functional groups. In the example, we can see that none of the valency same atoms or group of atoms. Hence, we can say that the carbon is chiral carbon. For example, in glucose, we can consider the carbon second, third, fourth and fifth are the asymmetric carbon atoms in glucose, whereas number one has two of its valency fulfilled by oxygen atom so it can't be considered as a asymmetric carbon and similarly for the six carbon atom we have two of the valencies of carbon fulfilled by hydrogen so it can't also be considered as an asymmetric carbon hence carbon 2 carbon 3 carbon 4 and carbon 5 of the glucose molecule is considered as asymmetric carbon Next, let us take a look at symmetric carbon atoms. If two or more valencies of carbon atom is filled by same atom or group of atom, then it shall be considered as the symmetric carbon. Now that we have completed the basic terms which is required for understanding the concept of isomerism, now we shall proceed to the concept of isomerism and we will take a look at the isomerism which are exhibited by the monosaccharides or carbohydrates in general. Carbohydrates exhibit six different types of isomerism. In various books, we have one or two more isomerism included, but these are the most general isomerism exhibited by carbohydrates. First, we have the ketose aldose isomerism also known as functional isomerism. Second, we have the DNL isomerism or enantiomerism. Third, we have the diastereoisomers. Fourth, we have the epimerism. Fifth, we have the anomerism. And sixth, we have the optical isomerism. Before moving further, we shall introduce ourselves with one more term that is the stereoisomerism. The term stereoisomerism refers to having same molecular formula but different structural formula in which the orientation of surrounding atoms is different in space that is it has different spatial orientation to understand stereoisomerism better we shall look at the various types of isomerism exhibited by carbohydrates in functional isomerism we have the example of glucose and fructose since both are 
hexose molecules but there is a difference in functional group in aldehyde that is in glucose and ketone in fructose so it can be considered as an example of functional isomerism next we have the example of glyceraldehyde the glyceraldehyde is a three carbon compound the name in itself says that it has an aldehyde functional group that is cho the ketone form of this triose molecule is dihydroxy acetone the example of glyceraldehyde and dihydroxy acetone is usually seen in the reaction of glycolysis where fructose 1,6 bisphosphate with the help of enzyme aldolase breaks down into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and dihydroxy acetone phosphate. The next type of isomerism which we will study is enantiomerism or also known as DNL isomerism. In this type of isomerism, we form mirror image of a monosaccharide which leads to changing in the orientation of OH group around the penultimate carbon atom. Here, there is change in orientation of OH and H around penultimate carbon atom or we can say a reference carbon atom in this example we have d glycerose which would form l glycerose as its mirror image note here that the position of oh in d glycerose is towards the right hand side and that in l glycerose is on the left hand side one can remember l as left positioning of oh group Similarly, we have the example of glucose. In glucose, here we have D-glucose which can be identified by the right hand side positioning of the hydroxyl group and it would be converted to L-glucose which can be identified by the left positioning of hydroxyl group. The properties which are important with respect to enantiomerism are that it forms non-superimposable compounds. It requires minimum one chiral carbon which must be around the penultimate carbon or the reference carbon. Next, the compound formed as a mirror image show a great deviation in their physical property. So, there is difference in physical properties of the compound. The next type of isomerism which we will study is known as diastereoisomerism in which we will take the example of aldohexose. Aldohexose can form 8 diastereoisomers. The structure of all the 8 diastereoisomers is not important to remember but one should remember that diastereoisomerism takes place around the second, third and fourth carbon atom that is by the changing of hydroxyl group and hydrogen group and with respect to fifth carbon atom we can have d and l images of the each eight diastereoisomers hence one can say that in all an aldohexose can form 16 isomers that is the eight diastereoisomers are formed around second, third and fourth carbon atom whereas with reference to the fifth carbon atom or penultimate carbon atom we can see D comma L forms of each of the eight diastereoisomers. Hence, in total, aldohexose will form 16 isomers. Now, let us take a look at the similarities and differences between enantiomerism and diastereoisomerism. Here, we will take a look at four different compounds. Here, we have the first compound and the second compound, which are mirror images of each other. Since they are mirror images, they are non superimposable over one another similarly compound 3 and 4 similarly compound 
3 and 4 are mirror images and they are non superimposable over one another. As we have studied earlier, such type of compounds are called as enantiomers. Now let us take a look at the rest of the compounds which are left in pairs that is pair 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 2 and 3 and 2 and 4. These are not better images of one another and also they are non superimposable. Hence these type of compounds are known as diastereoisomers that is the compounds having non mirror images and non superimposable whereas the compounds which are mirror image and are non superimposable are known as enantiomers the easiest way to understand the concept of enantiomerism is by superposing your left hand over your right hand since both are the mirror images of one another but still they can't be superposed over one another hence these are mirror images but they are non superimposable now let us take a look at some facts about carbohydrates and amino acids the abundant form of carbohydrate in human body plasma cell or nature is d form whereas the abundant form of amino acid in protein is l form both d comma l form of amino acids are present in human body but the most abundant form is L form. The D form of amino acid is usually from the dietary sources. The D form of amino acid present in our body is usually taken up from the dietary sources that is exogenous taken from outside. The L form of carbohydrate is usually present in the bacterial cell wall. Now let us move towards the next type of isomerism that is epimerism. Epimerism occurs due to difference in orientation of OH and H around any other carbon other than penultimate carbon. For example, we have D glucose and D mannose. We can notice that there is a difference in orientation of OH around second position at mannose with respect to glucose hence we can say that D mannose is an C2 epimer of glucose similarly in case of galactose we can notice that there is a difference in orientation around the fourth carbon atom that is the hydroxyl group in galactose is upwards whereas that in glucose is downwards hence we can say that D galactose is an C4 epimer of glucose. In case of galactose and mannose, they are not epimers of one another, but they can be said as diastereomers of one another. In case of galactose and mannose, they are not epimers of one another since they have more than one carbon atom. Hence, we can note that there should be difference in orientation only around one hydroxyl group around any carbon atom other than penultimate carbon if there is more than of hydroxyl group occurs around more than one carbon atom then they can't be termed as epimers of one another in this example d galactose comma d mannose can be termed as diastereomers of each other. Now let us take a look at the next type of isomerism that is anomerism. Anomerism usually occurs in cyclic compounds. It is due to the difference in orientation of H and OH group around the carbon atom possessing the functional group. For example, we have alpha and beta anomers for D glucose. That is, if the hydroxyl group is present down, then it is termed as alpha anomer. Whereas, if the hydroxyl group is present upwards, 
then it is termed as beta anemone and now we will move forwards to understand about optical isomerism in optical isomerism we have the example of d glucose and d fructose d glucose is dextrorotatory in nature and d fructose is levorotatory in nature so what do these terms mean dextrorotatory dextrorotatory signifies that the compound has the ability to rotate the plane polarized light towards right whereas levorotatory refers to the ability of the compound to rotate the plane polarized light towards left the examples of d glucose and d fructose must be remembered since they are mostly asked in exams if the solution does not rotate the plane polarized light towards left or right and if the plane polarized light passes through the solution without any deviation it means that it has equal component of dextrorotatory compound and levorotatory compound such type of solution is known as a racemic mixture in which the component of dextrorotatory and levorotatory are equivalent to one another now that we are at the end of the video i will tell you the easy way to determine the number of isomers on the basis of asymmetric carbon atom present in a molecule the formula to calculate the number of isomers is Two raised to n, where n is the number of asymmetric or chiral carbons. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, share, and subscribe.